Thanks everyone uh, for joining. Uh, hopefully you can see the slides okay. Uh, my name is Mark McCrory. I am the course director for the MBA program here at Ulster University. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. If there's any problems, um, you can let me know in the chat. Um, I'm also joined tonight by uh, a graduate and a current student, uh, so Alan and Sarah, who I'll introduce uh, properly uh, later on. Um, but thanks for taking the time to join tonight. Um, what I'm going to do now is I find with Blackboard that when I have my video enabled, um, sometimes it can interfere with my audio or moving the slides. So I'm going to do a presentation about the course. And as I'm going through that presentation, I'm going to disable my microphone. Oh, sorry, I'm not my microphone. Um, that would be really bad. I'm going to disable my camera. So I'm going to turn my camera off now. Uh, but hopefully you can still hear me OK. Um, so the format for tonight, I have a couple of slides that I need to cover from a corporate perspective. Um, and then I'll give you an overview of what we're going to cover uh, this evening. Um, a few people have just joined, so you're very welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening on the webinar. So just a couple of things that I need to cover um, as standard. The first is if you're interested in applying for any of the courses at Ulster University, you can do so at ulster.ac.uk. There's no official closing date for most courses, uh, but we on the executive MBA and the MBA I uh, would encourage you to try to apply by the last week of August or the first week of September. The course itself starts, uh, the week commencing the 20th of September. So if it's past the first week of September, it can be difficult to uh, check your qualification and go through the administration uh, registration process. Um, so we don't have a hard deadline as such, but if you could apply um, to be guaranteed of being accepted or offered a place, um, by uh, the, la the first week of September, preferably the last week of August, but we will consider it if you apply after that. Um, just one thing to say at the very start, uh, fees and finance. Um, so this is a corporate standard slide. The executive MBA um, costs £13,130 uh, in this academic year. Uh, that's the total cost of the course uh, if you were to complete it this year full time. Um, so that's for the Northern Ireland, GB and EU um, residents that are joining us. Um, that's the cost of the course full time. Obviously, if you're studying the course over two years, you would pay half of that in the first year and then the other half in your second year. Uh, but just bear in mind, um, in the next academic year, there's always a slight, very small price increase um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, there's flexible payment options available for all the programs at Ulster University. Um, if you're not employer sponsored, you can set up um, a payment plan uh, that's available as an option. Uh, there's a 10% alumni discount. So if you studied your undergraduate degree uh, with us here at Ulster University, uh, then you can avail of that. There's also a 5% discount for upfront payment, but you cannot use the 5 and the 10% discounts together. It's one or the other. And there is loans available uh, for postgraduate uh, tuition. Um, they're up to 5,500 pounds, and you can find out more at the webpage there. So there's just some corporate uh, information that I have to cover before talking more uh, in detail about the executive MBA. So uh, tonight's uh, webinar, um, I've planned uh, to speak for about 25, 30 minutes about the course, and then we're going to have a panel discussion uh, with Alan and Sarah. So in terms of my presentation, what I'm going to cover is the MBA program, uh, what we offer here at Ulster. I'm going to look at the benefits for you in studying an executive MBA. Uh, some of you will be making business cases to your employer, so we'll look at the benefits uh, for your employer. Uh, why should you choose for Executive MBA here at Ulster University? We'll look at the structure of the course and the modules that you'll study. Uh, very briefly, we'll talk about assessment. And then, as I said, we'll have the panel discussion where you'll get to hear um, a different perspective from the course than my own as course director. 
So to start off then, um, what is an MBA? Obviously, uh, you'll know this anyway, um, given that you've uh, logged on to the webinar this evening. But this definition of an MBA, I always like to highlight three things from this because I think they're, they're really important. The first is that an MBA is internationally recognized. Um, you can go anywhere in the world and an MBA is known and understood. Second thing is it's a general management course. And that's one of the strengths of the program is that we look at all areas of the business. Um, you'll study accounting and finance, but an MBA is not about trying to make you an accountant. You'll study marketing, but it's not about making you a marketeer. The idea behind an MBA is that you're able to have a broad skill set and have a holistic view of any organization uh, that you're trying to lead and there's a particular emphasis on leading and that strategic side of things and then the last thing i'd always highlight about this definition is it's not just about the business and management knowledge and skills there's also a strong personal development aspect to it it's about your development as a leader uh, developing your self-awareness, uh, building on those knowledge, skills, and personal development attributes that you already have and have been developing in your career to date. So that's the, the MBA in a nutshell. At Ulster University, we offer three MBA programs. We have the Executive MBA, which is offered part-time over two years, or the full-time Executive MBA, which is offered over one calendar year. The Executive MBA is for experienced managers and professionals. The MBA and then the MBA with advanced practice uh, are both offered full time. And traditionally, we had always offered an Executive MBA. And we were finding every year that we'd return more and more applicants away who weren't yet at a stage to take on the Executive MBA. So about three, four years ago, we introduced the MBA and it's targeting recent graduates or those early in their careers. So I look after um, all three programs. Um, I'm going to focus tonight on the executive MBA, but if you have any questions about the MBA or the MBA of advanced practice, I can answer those uh, as well. So the executive MBA and MBA in general has been running at Ulster University for just over 40 years now. And we have well over 3,000 graduates occupying senior positions locally and globally. Uh, so these are just some of the uh, graduates from the MBA at Ulster University uh, here in Northern Ireland. Um, very rare that you can go into any organisation of any size and not come across someone who studied uh, with us. So when you study in the Ulster University MBA, uh, you're joining um, quite a well-developed network of people who've come through the program um, for you. Every five years, we like to do a survey with our MBA graduates. So we'll do small surveys as you're going through the program to make sure um, everything's going okay. But every five years, we like to engage with our graduates and uh, get an idea as to how they um, find the program, uh, particularly now that they're They've graduated for a number of years. So the last survey we did was in 2017, so we'll be uh, looking to repeat this then next year. And as you can see here, uh, the results that we got back from 115 um, MBA graduates, the majority of whom were executive MBA, and 93% were satisfied with their experience with us. 78% believed the program had helped them progress their career, and 75% felt the program represented value for money because it is a very expensive program. Um, there, there's, there's no denying that. So what I thought I'd cover over the next few slides is the benefits for you um, in thinking about studying uh, an executive MBA, whether you study it with others or you, uh, you study it with another institution. These are the types of reasons that people uh, come on to do an executive MBA. Uh, typically, um, usually they're looking either to progress their career with the employer that they're currently with. Um, they may have reached a point in their career where they're looking to pivot, perhaps they're looking to change sector or they've progressed to a certain point in their own professional role and they're looking to move um, into a different type of role. Sometimes it's about what I've called here the entrepreneurial leap 
um, they maybe are an entrepreneur who's looking to build their business, or they're maybe um, somebody who's thinking about making uh, that leap and starting their own business. Another benefit uh, is um, the network that you will build through studying your MBA. And then lastly, as I've already touched upon, uh, the international brand uh, that having an MBA brings to your CV. So I've got a few quotations from recent graduates over the next few slides. So um, first one is in terms of career progression. So Phil Wolseley uh, graduated in 2015 from the MBA, executive MBA program here at Ulster. And at that time, he was a, a director of a different organization. Um, and then he went on to become chief executive officer um, at Griner Packaging. And in this quotation, um, he talks about how the executive MBA gave him that confidence to apply and to take on that new role um, in Griner. Um, to go in as a as chief executive officer, um, what it helped him to do was to evaluate the position of the organization, develop a strategy for how they could grow and present that to them, and then once appointed, how he would implement that and has helped him to implement it as he's gone through. And that strategic element is one thing that comes up time and time when you're talking to graduates of the executive MBA. It's that um, it's helped them. Many have got to um, a middle senior level position in their organization, but they've done it with a particular professional role um, or area that they've progressed through. And the MBA is helping them to take a strategic view of the wider organization and introduce them to areas with, um, that they may have worked with people before, but they perhaps um, haven't fully understood. This is a, a quote here from David. Uh, David Reed graduated in 2017. And he's talking here very similar to um, Philip about how, uh, as he's progressed, um, both toward the end of his MBA and post MBA, um, the course has allowed him uh, to understand the wider elements of the business that, that he spent a lot of his career with but it's really helped them to understand that business and to view it from a different perspective um, as he's progressed into increasingly strategic and senior roles. As I mentioned, one of the things that we find um, is it's not always about career progression uh, that people are trying to um, benefit from an MBA through. Um, sometimes it's about pivoting uh, their career. Um, this is Michael Holland. Uh, Michael graduated in 2013 and my, Michael was a healthcare professional uh, in prosthetics and orthotics and when he completed the um, MBA he then joined uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers as a consultant and what he felt the MBA allowed him to do was to take the skills that he had built up through his career in health, uh, but it was able to show how he could transfer those um, in a different type of role, um, in a different type of sector. So he progressed, uh, moved, uh, pivoted his career um, into consultancy, and now he's executive director of the Tebow Pure Hospital. And we have a number of people, um, and that's um, the reason for coming on the MBA. Typically, uh, they would be self-sponsored rather than uh, company-sponsored. Um, when they're interested in perhaps moving away from the current employer. And then the third reason um, we tend to find people uh, coming to do the MBA um, is about making that entrepreneurial leap. So I'll not talk too much uh, to this slide because Alan's joining us um, for the panel discussion tonight, but Alan um, set up his own uh, company post MBA and in this quote, He's discussing um, how one of the things that you gain from the program is having that rounded skill set, uh, particularly where you're developing and building uh, your own business, being able to, to move between different roles and make decisions. Um, Colin, uh, Colin Marks graduated also in 2017. Um, Colin um, set up his own uh, consultancy. Um, after completing the MBA 
And similar to Alan, he discusses here um, about the wide range of subjects, uh, particularly when you're, when you're starting your own business. Um, but he also talks here about the network uh, that he gained through the program. And the network just in terms, not just in terms of the other students that he studied with, which I'll talk about in a minute, but also the network that he built with the course team. Um, and it's always really good as a member of the course team, as course director, to keep in touch um, with people that come through the program here about what they're doing. Um, sometimes we can help, sometimes they help us come back into the program. Um, and sometimes uh, we'll uh, be working with people for many years after they graduate. So um, entrepreneurial leap is um, also one of the reasons that people come on to do the program. So another benefit um, of doing the executive MBA, I just mentioned is the network. Um, one of the real strengths of the course is that there's no typical executive MBA student. So we aim to recruit 20 to 25 students um, in every executive MBA class. And what you'll find is that there's no um, standard person within that group. So you may have someone who has no degree, uh, who's built up their own business, and who's coming on the course um, to try to think about taking that business to the next step. And they're sitting beside a corporate banking manager who's gone down a very academic path, uh, lots of professional qualifications and gone into a very corporate world, sitting beside someone else who's a engineer or an operations manager, um, sitting beside somebody else who is in the third sector. So there's no typical profile in terms of the sector that students come from or the professional role that they do within that. Uh, and that's one of the real value um, propositions of the executive MBA is that diversity. Uh, typically, MBA students on the executive MBA program um, are typically aged mid thirty, early to mid 30s to mid 50s. So you're looking at anywhere between 15 to maybe 30 years of career experience per student. And you have 20 to 25 students in the room. Um, as one of my colleagues, Daryl Cummins, would often say, um, one of the key things about teaching on the executive MBA is that the lecturer will come out having learned just as much each week as the students will. Uh, and that's one of the things, one of the differences between the executive MBA and the MBA that we offer. The executive MBA is very much geared around trying to facilitate discussion, trying to learn from each other in the room and tap into that knowledge that's in the room. Uh, whereas the MBA, uh, the students don't have necessarily built up that level of experience. So it tends to be much more lecture led. Um, so that's one of the things um, about the executive MBA program, one mm -hmm. of the benefits. And then the last benefit um, that I'm going to talk about tonight have already mentioned this, it's the international brand. Um, so an MBA is known and it's understood and in certain parts of the world, it really is a passport uh, to actually even um, think about doing business. Um, there are other masters that degrees out there and they're very good, uh, well-designed programs, um, but an MBA is internationally recognized. So it's good for your CV if you're thinking of working internationally or if you're thinking of your organization partnering internationally, uh, it's something uh, that's often looked for. Many of you uh, may have to make a business case if you're being sponsored by your employer. Uh, so I thought it worthwhile maybe summarizing some of the benefits uh, for an employer. And the business case, um, sometimes it's not just about maybe sponsorship financially to do the program. Sometimes it's even about trying to uh, be sponsored for the time out to study the course. So benefits for your employer, well, there's obviously the management and leadership development, the um, seeing the big picture and the strategic decision making that's developed through studying an MBA. And this is a quote here from John McMullen. Uh, John um, graduated from the program, chief executive of Bryson uh, Group when he was uh, studying uh, with us. And he talks here in this quote about how um, through studying the executive MBA, um, it equipped him uh, to develop a new business model um, for Bryson, um, in particular looking to integrate social purpose, 
with ethical commerciality. So um, there's that management and leadership development that you're going to gain um, through the programme. Something to think about um, is negotiating the time to do the programme. So we've tried to design the course to mean that there's minimal disruption um, to work. Typically, most people work nine to five. Um, so during semesters one and two, uh, students attend one afternoon at the evening per week, assuming that they're studying the executive MBA part time. So really, that works out at 24 afternoons in a year um, if you're studying the course uh, part time for two years. Now, I'll talk later on, we do have some block teaching in the third semester. Um, but when you're looking at the main element of the course, the, the weekly um, coming into class, um, during semesters one and two, that's one afternoon and evening per week. Another key benefit for employers is um, the assessment that you undertake in the module. Um, a lot of it tends to be very much uh, work-based. So it's about applying what you've learned, applying fresh thinking um, to uh, a lot of times your own organisation and thinking about how it may apply to your own organisation. The final piece that you study on the Executive MBA is the management project. You don't do a dissertation on the uh, Executive MBA. We're not interested in um, you contributing to the research in a particular area. What we're interested in is you taking a real problem or a real opportunity that applies to your workplace and using the learning from the MBA to think about how that could be uh, addressed or to actually address it. Um, this is an example here of Cara McAleer. Cara graduated in 2014. Um, she's now head of services at Kinos, but she uh, wasn't with Kinos whenever uh, she undertook the course with ourselves. And, the project she did with her employer at that time, um, it led, once it was implemented, to 375,000 of annual savings, 18% um, improvement in process time, and a 44% reduction in variability in throughput time. So um, big benefits for her employer in terms of that project, although um, that would be um, on the, the far end of the scale. It doesn't have to be uh, something at that level. So who are the benefits for you, the benefits for your employer? Um, why should you choose the Executive MBA at Ulster University? Um, to be honest, I would summarise this in one key thing, and that's that we try to make the programme as practical and applied as we can. Yes, it's an academic programme. Yes, it is underpinned uh, by academic research, and um, it's... Um, goes through all the same quality assurance that you would expect. Um, but the key feature of the programme that we try to emphasise is that practical aspect. And we do that in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, we have guest speakers from industry. Uh, so every semester, uh, we'll have a number of senior leaders from different organisations come in uh, to speak to the, uh, to the group. So um, it's not just about um, the people in the room, uh, the other students. It's not just about the lecture. It's also about bringing industry in to hear um, how they're addressing particular issues and their views on it um, in relation to perhaps the input from the lecture and your own experience. Another way that we try to emphasize the practical and applied nature is through live case studies. You will do at least one, if not two, live case studies um, during the executive MBA. So an example recently is on the marketing modules. We had uh, Musgrave come in uh, to present a particular opportunity that they were looking at with uh, Centra. Um, they were, uh, this was on the marketing module. So for the assessment for the marketing module, uh, what the students did was working in groups of four. Um, they considered the issue that Musgrave presented and then they um, researched that, uh, factored in the learning from the module, and then presented back their findings uh, to Musgrave at the end of the semester. And here's a quote from Brendan Gowan, the head of marketing. 
um, talking about the value that they um, they got from that process, um, the fresh perspective that it brought to them, and um, how they um, have been very excited about trying to realise some of the opportunities um, that uh, the students identified um, in their work. And, and you'll see there in the chat, uh, Sarah actually was um, uh, one of the, the students in this particular year group that looked at Musgrave. So that's one of the ways uh, that we try to um, try and make sure that it's practical and applied. You'll do at least one, if not two, live case studies um, across your MBA program. Some other features of the executive MBA. Um, every year, um, every group, we try to do a, a developmental residential. Now, ordinarily, we would do that as part of the induction to start the program. Um, but with COVID, um, we weren't able to do that last year. And we've decided instead of trying to organize it right now, we're going to deliver that um, during the program. Um, so there'll be a personal development residential. Um, we typically have that at the Galborn uh, Resort and Spa, um, although it will depend on COVID restrictions and hotel availability when we do get that scheduled. But uh, we'll have a personal development residential. Another feature of the program is we have dual accreditation with the Chartered Management Institute, CMI. Um, so what that means is um, if you're interested in professional accreditation as well, uh, you can go on to become a chartered manager uh, through the CMI. So it's the only additional cost on the MBA program at the minute. It's uh, £300. Uh, what you gain then when you graduate from the executive MBA, you also get a level seven diploma in strategic leadership and management from CMI. Uh, you automatically become a foundation chartered manager, and then after the MBA, you can upgrade to become a chartered manager uh, using that. It's a very simple, straightforward process at that point. And then a third um, key feature uh, on this slide is the link that we have with the Harvard Business School. Uh, one of the modules that we teach is international competitiveness, and that module is um, taught um, by lecturers that have been out to the Institute for Strategy and Competitiveness at Harvard to be trained on the delivery there. Uh, so they deliver uh, that module and go out regularly uh, to be, uh, maintain uh, that link um, and delivery of that part of the program. Something that we find common with people coming on to the executive MBA is sometimes it can be 10, 15, 20 years since they have studied their undergraduate degree and they can be quite nervous about coming back into uh, formal uh, higher education. And the other thing as well is um, you may have a degree in an area um, which didn't require you to um, ever write an essay or produce a report. So we make no assumptions um, for students coming on to the executive MBA, irrespective of their background. We'll also have some students who um, have progressed very um, well in their careers, or they've maybe set up their own business, but they haven't actually undertaken an undergraduate degree. So we make no assumptions. Uh, particularly the first two modules that you study, uh, but all the modules, but particularly those first two that you study between September and December, uh, we'll be making sure to step by step uh, introduce you to studying again and expectations and level seven, which is the, the level of masters that you're gaining here. Um, and you can see here the quote from, from Tom Houston, uh, having been out of education for over 20 years. And Tom is an example of somebody that joined the program with quite a primary degree. Uh, the thought of actually coming in and doing something like an MBA was very daunting. Um, we know that, we understand that. It's not the case for everybody. Some people are very confident coming into the program. Other people are very nervous. And one of the reasons we do not have a January intake is we want to make sure that we build a group and that we scale everybody up together. So that's why we only do an intake in September uh, for people coming on to the executive MBA. It allows us to make sure everybody has the best experience of the course. Another key feature is the course team. Um, the course team on the executive MBA is excellent. Um, we have established academics on the program. They have 10 plus years experience each in executive education, 
and a lot of them have maybe 10 up to 10 years work experience before they've actually come into the university as well. Um, they're all continuously involved in academic enterprise projects. So in addition to being engaged in research, they're also working with organizations um, in Northern Ireland and, and further afield. Um, they're all engaged in research as well. Um, it is an academic program. Um, one of the things that um, people don't realize is just how highly rated uh, the research across the university is. So at the last uh, UK uh, research assessment exercise, which is an uh, independent um, process that all universities go through, and uh, the last one was in 2014, um, it was reported 98% of the research uh, impact at Oslo University Business School was judged to be internationally excellent. And I can't remember if we were fifth or seventh in the UK for the practical impact of our research, but that was the highest in Northern Ireland for an academic institution uh, for the business schools uh, in Northern Ireland. So um, very practical, very applied, but internationally recognized research um, that our course team are engaging in. So uh, that's a little bit about the, the course and the benefits and so on. Uh, getting into a little bit more on the structure of the course. Um, the course itself um, runs over three semesters. If we just look at the table on the left-hand column here, semester one is autumn, runs for 12 weeks between uh, September through December. Semester two, the spring semester, runs for 14 weeks. It's 12 weeks top, two weeks for Easter off. That's January through to May. And then semester three, slightly different. Um, it runs from May through to September. But instead of teaching over 12 weeks, we block teach. So each module is delivered in a three-day block, nine to five, uh, for three consecutive days. And then students work on their coursework over the summer, meaning that they're not in each week. They can take breaks with their whole um, with their family, um, assuming that we're allowed to travel again. Um, so that's the structure of the course. Um, if we look at the middle column there, the part-time year one. So part-time year one, uh, in the semester one, you'll study two modules. Uh, it's a Tuesday afternoon and evening. Uh, semester two, you'll study a further two modules. That's a, again a Tuesday afternoon and evening. And then semester three, you'll study two block top modules, usually scheduled sometime the last week of May, first two weeks of July. If we look at the far right-hand column here, the part-time year two, um, very similar structure, except in semester one and two, you attend on a Wednesday afternoon and evening rather than a Tuesday. And then in the um, summer, you have one block top module and you complete your management project. Um, if you're studying the course full time, then you attend a Tuesday with the year ones, a Wednesday with the year twos, and that allows you to complete the program in that one academic year. Just a couple of slides before I uh, hand over to the panel discussion. Uh, these are the modules that you'll study. Um, so the first two modules, if you're studying part-time, are marketing and accounting and finance. Then in the spring semester, you'll study managing people and operations management. And in the summer semester, you'll study digital transformation and international competitiveness. Then in year two, you'll do innovation and entrepreneurship in your first semester and you'll also start your management project. In your second semester, you'll do leadership and change in economics. And then in the summer semester, you'll do the strategy module and finish off your management project. Assessment, 100% coursework. We have no exams on the MBA. Um, that's to try to reflect the practical and applied nature of the course. Uh, as I mentioned already, we'll have one, if not two, live case studies as part of the assessment. And a lot of the coursework will be asking you to focus on your own organization or an organization that you've worked with previously. So, um, talked a lot um, about the course and the structure, um, giving you the perspective on it, certainly um, from on my side. Um, but at this point, I would like to bring in um, Sarah, and Alan. Um, Sarah McCracken is part-time year two. Uh, so she's actually just coming to the end now. There's really just the management project is the, the last part of the process for Sarah. 
uh, Sarah's Head of Fundraising and Communication with RSPB and I. And I also have Alan Graham, who's CEO of Scribe Cycling. Uh, Alan's a graduate, he graduated in 2016. So, um, Thank you both to Alan and Sarah for joining us this evening. Um, I'm going to ask a, a few questions of Sarah and Alan. Um, if you have any questions at all um, that you'd like to ask, um, feel free to type those into the chat and we can look at those as well. Um, so um, I also um, enable my video at this point as I'll not be uh, change it between the slides. Okay, so um, first question then, if I could maybe ask this one to Sarah. Um, so really, um, Sarah, what led you, uh, what motivated you to want to study the MBA with us? Um, thanks, Mark. So can I just, is my camera working? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. I can't see myself but there you go. Um, I, good evening everybody and Mark thank you for having me on this evening. Um, I suppose my motivation was trying to get that sort of all-round qualification. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, courses out there, there's leadership courses, there's this, that and the other and there, are, you know, some of them are really quite pricey but I wanted something that was kind of all-round um, and would give me a really good business overview, um, particularly um, relating to, to finance, you're reading balance sheets, things like that. Um, my background is zoology and genetics um, and I have um, worked in PR and communications for, for years and years. So, so again, in terms of my career and where I wanted to go to, I think it was really important just to get that, that overall view. So um, from that perspective, I mean, Mark, you've outlined the benefits of it, but I think yeah, that, that was the real selling point uh, for me. So it, it's been great. I've, I've loved every minute of it. And I really like the diversity of topics that have been covered as well. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and it's glad you're still positive at this point. At this point, this is a bit where you can get a bit cynical. I just want, just want it to end now. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'm a bit demob happy, Mark, I have to say, but just let everybody know. So I finished my last strategy module, that's the one waiting on the marks. Um, and um, yeah, the management project, the end is, the hand is on the 16th of September. Um, I know some colleagues have asked for extensions and things, so there is flexibility if you're concerned about that um, near the time. But uh, yeah, the end is in sight. I'll be done very soon. Absolutely. Um, the question just came in there, I'll maybe just address it uh, now. Um, yeah. Is, oh, Celine's um, question. Hi, Celine. Thank you. Um, yeah, w when I when I started in the MBA, um, I was working for the Control School Support Council. So my chief executive was really, really supportive. Um, I, I'm self-funded because the organisation they weren't in a position to, to, to fund anything like that. Um, but he, he, he made sure that I was going to be able to take the time off um, to, to do that. I then moved fairly early on to the RSPB and um, I got the job in about November, just after I started and so started there in January. But as part of my negotiations for that, um, I was allowed some some time off. But it, it really just depends, Lena. I think if, if your organisation is paying for it, then I would be expecting them to give you the time off. But do you know what? You just block it out in your diary and the world hasn't ended that I haven't been there one afternoon um, a week. I do need to make up a wee bit of the time. Um, so it just, it's horses for courses. But you know, when you block it off and you're physically not there, um, people get used to that. So you, you, it was, for me, it was, it was okay um, to work around. Some people have said as well that they find that having that afternoon off a week, it's almost like a, a chance to get your head refreshed. Um, that's something they look forward to during the week to get to get out of um, work. Um, there's a rule of thumb that we say, and, and I don't know if this is helpful or maybe scary, but um, if you're studying with us six hours per week, uh, so you'll study during semesters one and two, three hours in the afternoon and three hours in the evening um, for each module. Um, so that's six hours per week that you're studying with us. If you're thinking about your your own personal time, um, try to factor in one to two hours. Um, now everybody's different, and some people um, some people will uh, be more like me and quite pressure prompted, and I'll leave things to more towards the deadline, whereas other people uh, will be much more structured. Um, but you do need to factor in um, time as well for, for progressing the course on, on your own time as well. Um, Alan. Um, 
obviously there's there's a number of institutions um, in Northern Ireland that offer the executive MBA program uh, and also there's a number of distance learning and so on. Um, why did you choose uh, Austria University? Um, yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for having me again, Mark, by the way, it's good to be part of this here. Um, yeah, many reasons, actually. Whenever I started to research the MBA, one thing that was really important to me was was acquiring knowledge. That was the big thing. But I wanted knowledge that I could apply in, in real life, like in your work circumstances and knowledge that would progress your career. So I actually researched MBAs from all over the world, Bath, Dublin, Queen's University, America, you know, just some ridiculous places. And um, whenever I, I kept coming back to Austria University because of the application of, of what you learn. So the skills are applied skills. They're not just things that you learn and you, you get a certificate at the end of it. And just somebody touched on it there earlier. Maybe it was in one of the slides that, you know, every semester we got somebody from like the BBC coming in or like, I used to work for Chain Reaction at the time. They would come in and you had to solve a problem in that company. So I was absolutely it was the course was brilliant. And I was fascinated with every module because you had these top tier people coming in and you could ask them really hard questions. So it wasn't that you just learn knowledge. It's OK. You learn something about chain reaction, global bike distributor at the time. You have this problem and we would go and ask these guys, you know, how do you get next day delivery to you know, people in Australia? Like, how do you solve those those issues? And even the BBC, that was one sort of stands out because they had at that time, uh, they had a massive strategy change. And it was part of our strategy module. And it was because Netflix was was creeping into their territory quite strongly and they had to completely change direction. So I think that whenever I was reading through the syllabus way back at, at day dot, it just kept flagging up those things that I wanted, which was knowledge, skills, application to, to real life. Um, so yeah, and obviously because it's in Northern Ireland or, or even on the island of Ireland, it was just an easy, easy one for me to, to say yes to really. Um, yeah, and thoroughly enjoyed it and don't regret a minute, you know, and I think that um, that question about the, the part time thing, like half day, I, I was I was a sponsored student whenever I did my MBA. Um, so I got half day off on a Wednesday and had to make up the rest of hours, the rest of my hours during the week. Um, but you know, from Wednesday, one o'clock to nine o'clock was was fantastic. I mean, if you go there with a learning attitude, it's it's you're literally it's edge of your seat sometimes just with some of the topics you, you discuss and you learn. So it's um yeah, it's it's worth it in my my opinion anyway. But yeah, that's that's why University of Ulster apply application, knowledge, the skills you learn, and it's you know, it's relatively local for me anyway. Right, so thanks, Alan. Um I see a question here from David. Uh would it be typical for executives to take part in the course full time? Um in terms of the course, um, maybe if I answer that, um, what I have found over the years is where students tend to do the course full time, um, oftentimes they are maybe between roles. So um, they've maybe taken voluntary redundancy from one role. Uh, they've always wanted to do an MBA. So they're actually, before they go back into the, into the job pool, oh, um, they decide to do uh, the MBA. Um, uh, and do it in one year rather than over two years. Um, other times people are coming back to Northern Ireland and again, uh, rather than looking for a role straight away, they decide that they're going to do the course full time. Some people do do the course full time while working full time. Personally, I do not know how they do it. I suppose it depends on what other things you have um, in your, your life, other commitments with family or, or church or sport or um, depending on, on those other commitments, what you can what you can take on. But I personally, if you're working full time, I would suggest not to do the course full time as well. Take the time, do it part time. You'll get more out of it by putting yourself under less pressure. Where people do do the course full time and work full time, it's because there's a lot of flexibility uh, with their role. Um, okay, um, Sarah, um, just thinking about the course um have you been able to i know it's it, it's quite early days still for you um but have you been able to apply much of the course uh back into into your roles um yes um so can i just address that last point about the, the full time thing as well um don't underestimate the amount of personal time you'll need to spend on this um outside i think we're coming on to work-life balance and stuff shortly mark but 
yeah, there are, I have colleagues on the course at the minute who are doing this full time. I don't know how they're doing it, you know, and, and working as well. Um, so I, I would think really carefully about that. We had a colleague in the first year of my did, but he got some flexibility from work. Remember, Freddie? We got some flexibility. He got some flexibility from work and was, was able to do it. But I, I would think really, really hard about that. Um, so um, in terms of what I have applied, yeah, I, I find I've been able to apply stuff from every module, uh, which has just been brilliant. Um, operations management, um, you know, there was, you know, you've light bulbs going off in your head when you're when you learn about these things. Is that why that's done like that? Oh, I've done things like that. That's what that means. So, so through I've got something out of every uh, module now. Um, just, just to let Mark know, I'm, I'm flat out at the minute, Mark, and leadership team coaching, if you can see that. So Mark does the um, people management uh, module, um, which I really, really enjoyed. And he brought in an external speaker, um, Anne Phillipson from Deloitte, is that right? One of one of the big agencies anyway, and she was brilliant. And she talked about uh, leadership team coaching by Peter Hawkins. And again, just all the pennies dropped from me in terms of how I can start to develop my team. So I am actually De developing uh, my, my team at the minute um, through through this process, which um, w was great. So that's a really tangible example. Um, I also have to do a fundraising strategy, so I'll be taking elements of fundraising out of that. And you know, so so everything you've learned, you, you're going to be able to apply it somewhere along the line. Um, certainly, certainly, and I haven't even finished the course yet, so I'm just really excited you know, to see what's going to be next after this. Yeah, I'm Grant, Grant Thornton. I'm from Grant Thornton, so better better say that since they're competitors. <laughs> um, so um, I have probably a similar question to you, but thinking more um, in terms of you now having set up your own business, um, how have you been able to use the, the course? Yeah, so there's, uh, you know, there's a couple of modules that, that stand out for me that I think probably one of them really challenged my mindset um, forever. And the second one, uh, which was well, the first one was entrepreneurship, innovation, entrepreneurship, because you know it was it was interesting for me. It's my my personality is I'm quite curious as a person, which I think does lend itself quite well if you if you're if you have that mindset and you want to start a business because you're always asking, you know, why do we do it this way? Why don't we do it that way? And I think the innovation and entrepreneurship module really brought out a lot of the the, the bigger things around. You know business and um, my involvement in business and you know how things work and you went into lots of depth around that um, so that, that was one kind of stood out for me because it kind of it did ch change my perception of a lot of things um, and I think it almost opened up that curiosity side of me a bit, a bit more than it had been um, and I think that in hindsight now it's probably it probably was a bit of a, a trigger or a, a point in time that put you on a different tangent um, and here I am you know a few years later several years later with my own business um, and the second one was was accountancy and finance. Um, I think with you know the MBA, you learn a lot over the period. So I did part time two years, and accountancy and finance just, finance just stands out as one of those modules where I I found it really difficult because I'd never been exposed to that. All the other areas I had some sort of sort of exposure um, throughout my career at some point, um, but now you know it's you spend a lot of time on it. You learn a lot, like uh, service center about you know, balance each balance sheets, cash flow, liquidity ratios. You learn a lot of that stuff and then now whenever you actually get the apply in real life for me anyway personally and in my business it's one of the massive topics so even though it was difficult at the time i gained a lot of skills and a lot of experience in, in certain aspects so now the, the step to learn much more of it you know it, it isn't isn't that isn't that much um so yeah those, those are two big ones that stood out for me and i i would say definitely had a positive impact on, on where i am today thanks alan um talked about it a, a little bit already um but um sarah um how did you find that that balance um because it is one of the big concerns that uh, is a question that came up um how do you balance um or how have you found um that balance between um let's think of it like a venn diagram you've got your 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 work life your your home life and your your MBA life. How do you, how do you balance that and what's your experience been like? Um, so someone's just driven down in. So my lockdown dog is now shouting at everybody. Um, it's a Labrador. He's very lovely. Um, I. I, I don't know if I have got the balance right, Mark, to, to, to be honest. Um, you know, if my video is on, you can see my nice Zoom backdrop, but it's absolute chaos beyond my desk. You know, the house is upside down, but I suppose it's 
it's getting your support structures in place um, has really helped me. So um, I've, I've two young children, so you know, obviously making sure that they're fed and watered is really important. Um, you know, getting support from from your work as well. Um, and I've also found the support um, from my MBA colleagues to be fundamental as well to all this. You know, you'll you'll be sitting on your WhatsApp groups at eleven o'clock at night, no problem. Possibly even later, um, chatting stuff through and supporting each other. So that's been good. But um, yeah, it it is a. God, he's really cross now. It, it, there is a lot of work involved, um, but you just when, when you sign up, to it, you're committing to it. Um, so I mean, I didn't go out much before lockdown anyway, so I'm certainly not going anywhere at the minute. Um, but you know, I, I would spend all day Sunday working on some assignments. Um, I'd be working when the kids go to bed, um, late into the night, um, and that's that's my best time to be doing the work. But it, it's different for different people, depending on your your commitments. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't underestimate the amount involved, but but it's enjoyable and it's. You know, it's applicable and you're learning so many new skills um, from it. You know, it, it's really, really worth doing. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and then a, a few questions that come in on the chat. So I'll, I'll get to those in a second. But just one final question, um, maybe to, to Alan. Um, if you were to give a piece of advice um, to, to someone who's thinking about doing the MBA program, um, what would that be? Yeah, the big thing, I probably touched on a few times, Mark, but it, the big thing for me is, is going to learn. I think if you go in with that attitude, you'll just get so much more out of the course. Um, I know it's probably it's just sort of common nature, but I think people in the MBA, well, whenever I was doing it anyway, some people went in to get the piece of paper just to say they had an MBA, internationally recognized, so on. And there was another part of the class which was there for knowledge. And I, I was one of those people, but you go in to learn, you get this. You get this, the same bit of paper at the end of the the, 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 the terms anyway. Um, but if you go in with that mindset, just be open to everything. You'll get so much more out of the class, and you'll be much more rounded as a person at the end of it. That would be my single piece of advice. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. It's something we always say at in, induction is um, sometimes people hear it and sometimes they don't. But don't chase a mark on the executive MBA. It, it's much more the learning uh, that people get through the program. Um, a few questions. Um, uh, the assessment strategy. Um, so um, it's all um, coursework based. So there's no exams on the MBA. There is a mixture of um, individual coursework with, that you'll complete 100% by yourself. Um, but there is group work and it's a requirement of any MBA program that there be group assessment in it. So off the top of my head and um, maybe Sarah can keep me right if I miss anything out. Um, it will change a bit since Alan did the course, but there's group work for the accountancy and finance module, the innovation and entrepreneurship module, uh, marketing module. Um, I think that's that's all that have a group work element to them. Um, the rest are individual. Um, assessment will be through essays, reports, presentations, um, and as I mentioned, a lot of it will be work based. So either live case study um, or it will be you applying the material back into your own um, organization or thinking and reflecting it in terms of your career to date. So um, that tends to be the assessment strategy. There's, there's no exams. Now, I did get in trouble once because um, in operations management, a part of the assessment is a class test. So uh, somebody did once say to me, you tricked us there, Mark, uh, when you said there was no exam. So um, there may be a class test, um, although I think Alan has taken that approach uh, on that module or is intending to this year. Um, question over the, the structure. So um, if you're studying the course part time, you'll do uh, two modules in semester one at six hours per week. Uh, in semester two, you'll do two modules, it's six hours per week. And then in semester three, which is block taught, uh, you'll study three full days per module. So that's nine to five for three days for the first module and nine to five for three days for the next module. Uh, we'll give you those dates at the very outset. So you'll have them from, you start the course in September, that doesn't happen to the next year, uh, end of May, start of June. So you, you'll know those well in advance. Um, if you're doing the course full time, uh, you just double uh, those figures that I've just given you. 
Um, is there any other uh, questions uh, anybody has? Oh, yes, um, entrance requirements. Um, you do not need to have a degree. Uh, so our standard entry requirements is a second class honours degree and three years uh, relevant postgraduate work experience. And, um, we're very specific about what we're looking for there. It's, it's that it's not just three years work experience, that it's uh, appropriate three years. But um, we have people who do not have degrees uh, that apply for the programme. Sometimes uh, they'll have professional qualifications, um, like um, has been the case for the person that asked the question here. Um, or other times they'll have no qualifications whatsoever, but maybe the 10, 15 years work experience. So we're very open to people with different backgrounds coming onto the program. Um, and I'm more than happy uh, to have a chat with anybody. So um, if you're interested in the course, please feel free to uh, drop me an email and have a phone call. Under normal times, we'd always invite everybody in for a coffee at Jordan's time to have a chat. Um, before uh, applying, but can't do that at the minute. Um, any other questions that anybody would like to ask just before I uh, finish off? Just a couple more slides then. So thank you, uh, Sarah and Alan, for, for giving up your time this evening. Um, big question that I get a lot of um, at the minute, understandably, is with the move from Jordanstown to Belfast. So. Um, the slide here, uh, the Belfast campus remains on a schedule to open its doors. Um, courses are starting to transfer this incoming semester from the Jordanstown campus to Belfast. The plan is that the executive MBA uh, will be running on the Belfast campus. Um, so unless something uh, really changes um, uh, over the next few weeks, uh, the latest information I have is that it will be in the Belfast campus rather than the Jordanstown campus for the executive MBA. Um, and obviously, if anything changes there, um, I'll let you uh, know anybody that's, that's applied for the program. Um, COVID-19. Um, so we're continuing to operate uh, safely, um, being advised um, in terms of public health guidance. Um, we're hoping and expecting uh, to welcome students back um, on campus for an on-campus learning experience. So the executive MBA, um, the plan is at the minute that we'll be going back, moving back from um, our temporary home of online learning, we'll be going back to the on-campus face-to-face um, teaching from September. So Again, um, unless anything changes, that's that's what our plan and assumption what we're working to at the minute. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to give me a call, um, then my contact details and my email. Uh, a lot of you probably already have that already, but please feel free. Um, if you have any anything perhaps I covered too quickly tonight, or you want to know more about anything, uh, do just uh, let me know. Um, so really, um, all that's left is to say um, thank you for taking the time uh, tonight. Um, maybe the executive MBA isn't right for you this year, um, but hopefully this has started you to think down that path. Um, I've had people who the first time that I meet them is on a webinar like this or under normal circumstances we'd be doing this in person. Um, and one case that always has stays in my mind, it was five years from when I met the person to when they actually started the course. So um, keep in touch. Um, hopefully, I would like to see some of you in September, um, but if not, maybe the next September um, or a future time. So uh, please do keep in touch. Um, any questions, get in contact. Uh, thanks so much for attending this evening.